Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the course on two phase flow and heat transfer ME680 slash ME480. For some strange reason, there are two numbers for this course, and historically that has been continuing ever since I have been teaching this course. My name uh, Professor Arun Sridharan, Mechanical Engineering Department at IIT Bombay. I have been uh, here for uh, since 2005, so about uh, 15, 16 years now. Uh, and this has been an elective which was uh, there in the curriculum but was not offered for a very long time and this being my area of uh, interest. So, this I have been offering since 2008 or 9. What is what is two phase flow and heat transfer etc. We will we will talk about it in great detail. Uh, the course content and uh, marking scheme etc. which for which everybody is interested in knowing those things the weightages, policies, books, so on and so forth. But before that, I just want, I want to sensitize you to the fact that two-phase flow is there around us everywhere. It is a very important part and parcel of our everyday life. And the analysis of two-phase flow situations, heat transfer situations is suddenly way too complicated even after we know the single phase fluid mechanics and heat transfer. So, I would spend some time in trying to help you appreciate the uh, need for understanding, need for understanding the differences between uh, single phase and two phase flow and how single phase and two phase start diverging very, very quickly because of a simple thing like how a pipe is oriented, how the flow is taking place, two phase flow can become uh, very different from single phase flow. So, what is what is two phase flow? You know, we can also call it multi phase. Multi phase typically would in, may also include solid and uh, that is why we typically like to keep it as two phase flow. Now, two phase flow occurs in nature everywhere. Okay. You can have two phase, three phase, also solid liquid gas, single component two phase flow, multi component two phase flow, right? Air and water flowing through a pipe, okay? You have a pipe, you are out of town for a few days, and uh, you open the tap, most of the time water does not come out immediately. There is a gush of air for about a second or two, and then you have, especially if it is an independent house and you have a water tank there and it is not an apartment complex, you will see a mix of air and water coming out for about a couple of seconds and then you will get water. So, that is air and water. Your carbonated drink, you know soda, coca cola or thumbs up or whatever, you know, you drink it, you are also sucking in the air along with the water, along with the drink in the straw, air water, air liquid. They are not the same species, okay. It is not like water and steam. Water and steam is composition chemically, it is the same. Whereas here, air, water, two completely different species existing in liquid and gas phase, two phase, two component, okay. Water and air in form of carbonated drink, again, two component, two phase. You take a look at petroleum natural gas industries. You have the petroleum products coming out from the sea ocean flow. You have natural gas along with it and of course, there are solids also which are coming out. So, solid, liquid and gas, three phase, multi component because you have hydrocarbons, you have natural gas which is a different composition, you have solids which is different composition. So, you can have single component two phase flow, multi component I will typically start writing it like this, ok instead of writing two phase, two phase every time, two dash the symbol phi. So, what are we talking about? We are going to talk about most of our applications that we will talk about would be single component
two phase and because the uh, this is one of the uh, subjects where the application is so very important and the fundamentals were probably understood later that is what I would think because uh, the applications say in, in reactor industry that form the basis of how uh, two phase flow was understood and why it was studied so much in detail in the 50s, 60s, 70s is because of the application in the nuclear industry. So, there we talk primarily about water and steam, okay, water and steam and fundamental studies many times were done with air water uh, experiments, etcetera. So, 90 percent of what we are going to do in this course would be related to water, steam or single component two phase systems. Okay. So, we will talk about water, steam. Of course, there will be situations where we will also talk about air water system to understand concepts of phase flow regime maps etcetera. I will go into the definitions of those later. Okay. So, our course is divided broadly into two parts. I will come to the classification and naming etcetera later, but what is uh, done in your undergraduate courses mechanical engineering? You do thermodynamics, then you go to fluid mechanics, then you go to heat transfer and then at the end of this you go to the fluids plus heat transfer plus thermo applications which is applied thermodynamics, which is applied thermodynamics where you talk about Brayton cycle etcetera, Brayton cycle, psychrometry, refrigeration system so on and so forth. Okay. Whereas, there we had either you talked about fluid mechanics, you talk about flow of water throughout, heat transfer, how heat is transported whether it was water or oil or refrigerant it did not matter because the component was in single phase throughout right. Now, in this course two phase everything is going to matter. The way the flow is happening will affect the way heat transfer is happening. I will explain this through examples then we will hopefully seamlessly merge into the content of the course. So, let us just go back to our everyday life, you know. Uh, many of us have watered a garden at some point of time in our life, right. Yeah, you have also seen uh, a pump which is pumping the water from the ground floor to the top floor of your building and water also flowing from the top uh, tank to the ground floor. So, the, there is a sump at the ground level, there is a tank at the, uh, at the top level of your building and there is a there is a motor and pump assembly which is doing this, which is taking water here and then through a network of pipes it is going to various households and including the ground floor, correct. So, what is the nature, what is the direction of flow here? This is stagnant, this is upward, this is downward, but in our undergraduate fluid mechanics, did we bother, did, was our analysis any different for flow through this pipe versus flow through this pipe? No, frictional loss was F L V squared by 2 G D, that was what it was. And then Bernoulli equation was applied, yeah, elevation differences took care of the pressures, okay, but the frictional pressure drop was f is nothing but a function of epsilon by d and local the the pipe Reynolds number orientation never mattered to us, correct. Now, now consider another situation in our if you are trying to water the garden this is your pipe which is coming out of the tap and let us say this is the tap. this is the tap. Okay. So, you have gone out of town, 
come back after a week 10 days and then the pipe is all having the column is having air. So, when you open the tap initially you can have two possible orientations of the tube. The tube might be just left down like this or the tube may be held by a hand in a horizontal position. When you open the tap it is a mixture of air plus water which is coming in here also as well as here also. I do not know how many of you have observed, but if, if you have not this is a good chance to go back and observe what, what you would see. You will have a mixture of air and water coming in and when the pipe is horizontal I am expanding this blowing this up you would see air sitting on top and water trying to flow like this correct. Whereas, if the pipe was held vertical or in an orientation which is not horizontal, correct or you might you might even see a bubble which is like this, but it is it is all discreetly if I take a cross sectional view it is all roughly in the center and the walls are completely wet with liquid. If I take a cross section view here and this at this location what do I see? I see liquid gas. Same pipe, same flow rate, same amount of m dot water and m dot air, same amount is flowing. What is different? How the pipe is oriented is different. What does it cost? It has caused the flow to appear different for you. I hope you are able to appreciate the just I have just changed and we have played with this also as kids you know we would have uh, with the hose pipe would be held like this then we will take it down we would see the bubble moving along the air bubble moving along the pipe also we have we probably have played like that also as kids. This aspect of two phase flow where the orientation I am going to start putting one by one points orientation orientation means how the flow is going to go horizontal or vertical and then of course, upward downward is also different we will come to that is going to give rise to lot of complications. What are the complications? Why first complication? Why am I saying it is a complication? Now, as engineers what are we interested in? Let us come back let us not lose our perspective of why we are studying what we are studying. As engineers what are we interested in? power loss, what is friction that is wall shear stress right. I am talking only hydrodynamics, we will come to heat transfer also. Hydrodynamics, wall shear, this is manifestation is pressure drop, what is it given by mu du by dy at the wall correct. Now, please imagine a situation where I have a single phase liquid and the velocity profile is like this. Everywhere around the circumference what the, the same fluid is touching this is a parabola or in three dimensional paraboloid you would see a bullet like velocity profile. Gradient is exactly the same everywhere because the same fluid is in contact everywhere and you could just use the equation u max into 1 minus r by r square blah 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 you get the answer ok. Now, look at this situation look at this case In, let us not even make it so complicated let us have it very nice this is 50 percent with air, 50 percent with liquid ok. When I am doing this what are the will will if the if the orientation is horizontal will the liquid and gas flow with the same velocity 
you cannot have several uh, things free you have to impose some constraints okay mass flow rate is fixed for the two so they are different but they are fixed and it is always ensured that the liquid and gas occupy exactly half the pipe why is liquid at the bottom and why is gas at the top well gas is lighter what is density of air approximately 1.2 kg per meter cube 1.23 1.2 what is density of water approximately 1000 kg per meter cube roughly how many times 800 times probably 12 eights are 96 right about 800 820 times density heavier therefore it will be settling at the bottom lighter so it is going to go up obvious this plays a very very important role okay now i'm not yet completed this let us look at the fact that if i have the same flow area for the two what is going to happen m dot is equal to rho a v or rho a u whatever you want to call it. Okay, suppose I I keep the mass flow rates the same. So let us say m dot air is equal to m dot water. That means rho air a air velocity of air is equal to rho water a water u water. Areas are same, they cancel off. Therefore, u air by u water is equal to rho water by rho air. This is much, much greater than 1. So, u air, correct? Oh, oh. In single phase, every part of the fluid had the same fluid which is in contact. Therefore, the velocity was not an issue. Now, I would have a pipe where if it is like this, this would be the velocity profile here and this could be the velocity profile here. This is water, this is gas. Okay. So, go back to our fundamental definition of wall shear stress. Mu du by dy, uniform everywhere, here not same in top and bottom. correct first problem then density versus specific volume what is specific volume is nothing but 1 over density 1 1 gram of water or 1 kg of water when it becomes steam how much space is it going to occupy is going to take huge amount of space but because you have confined the space to uh, d by 2 or r, the velocity is so high. Otherwise, if you did not confine, if you did not have a a equal to a w, what you would see is typically this. The liquid would be made to flow here and gas would occupy the larger volume. Okay. So, you can control only so much and I hope you are quickly realizing what are the issues. In a horizontal flow situation, this is the velocity profile. You now take a vertical flow situation. You have vapor in the center, liquid surrounding it. So, if I want to plot the velocity distribution here as a function of radius, I would have a fast moving vapor coming like this and then some slow moving liquid something like this okay so of course there is symmetry here like your single phase but there is a velocity which is u air and u water okay i don't know what to do now 
bulk mean velocity all of us are familiar with bulk mean velocity average or bulk mean velocity i'm i'm not i'm not I'm just trying to tell you how different two phase flow is compared to single phase and why we have to have a separate course on that having studied single phase we should be able to do everything in two phase no the complexities are way higher because of very very small changes that are even going to happen average velocity bulk mean velocity what was it u bulk mean those of you who remember can be can take it down like this r comma x dr 0 to r this comes from mass balance okay now what we will do for pipe flow Reynolds number is rho u bar d by mu and friction factor would be a function of epsilon by d Reynolds number delta p is f l u bulk mean squared by 2 g hydraulic diameter power is equal to rho g q I am used to calling it delta p this is h l head loss ok h l rho g ok this is our standard procedure for calculating the pumping power and pressure drop in case of internal flow very nice what were the properties that you needed for Reynolds number density mu viscosity u bar average velocity why is this such a uh, average velocity why is this such a big deal you will realize very very quickly consider a two phase flow situation thermodynamics remember thermodynamics what did we say v is equal to vf plus x times vg minus vf enthalpy is hf plus x times hg minus hf so on and so forth right that means for a particular quality there is a particular thermodynamic property specific volume which means there is a particular density what density will i use in this problem suppose i am talking of a problem where the flow is getting heated this is a flow through a circular pipe and it is getting heated all of us have studied heat, heat heat transfer right it is getting heated if i do a control volume analysis this is let us say m dot h this is m dot h plus dh here this is my location dz and you do the energy balance you get m dot h plus q double prime pi d dz is equal to m dot h plus m dot dh therefore dh by dz would be equal to this is simple energy balance okay which you have done in ug heat transfer this would cancel dh by dz would be equal to q double prime pi d by m dot okay why am i bringing this this can be written in terms of uh, quality i would get dx by dz is equal to q double prime pi d by m dot hfg again this is not new straightforward stuff using h is equal to hf plus x times hfg take the derivative the hf differential would be zero hfg would come out as constant dx by dz that's what you would get now what i'm trying to tell you is for flow through such a pipe quality is going to change at every location so if i want to plot quality with respect to axial direction z constant heating q double prime is constant this is zero quality and this is x exit quality every location in the flow every z location your x changes that means rho changes viscosity changes therefore Reynolds number changes there you go what was a straightforward simple calculation has now become a 
calculation that you would do at every step. I hope you are realizing. And more importantly, let us appreciate the fact as quality increases, m dot of gas phase increases, m dot of liquid phase decreases, right? More vapor is generated com compared to the liquid. So, you are going to have more mass flow rate. If there is more mass flow rate and your pipe is of fixed dimension, what happens to the velocity? As m dot increases, quality increases, velocity increases, velocity of gas phase. Because this increases tremendously as compared to, it is going to occupy more space, more and more space and you would see that it is going to go very fast and the liquid would be pushed to the walls. If you are talking of a vertical flow, this flow would be such that the liquid would be pushed to the wall. It is like, you know, how do I tell you? If you are, if you are at, uh, say, a uh, railway station where uh, your Rajdhani Express is going, okay, passing non-stop, what are you told to do? You are told to move behind a yellow line which is there and it is a crowded platform. Say, if you are in Bombay and it is Dadar railway station, Rajdhani passes around 5.15 in the evening and it has attained almost 70-80 km per hour speed while passing through the other. You are asked to move to the periphery this way. Dur khade rahiye is what they tell and the way and this train just whizzes past the platform. Exactly like this because UG is so much higher compared to UF it is going to occupy, it is going to push the liquids to the wall and just accelerate through the center of the pipe. Oh my God. Then not your, your average velocity also is going to change. And average velocity does not make any sense now here because you are going to talk about liquid and vapor velocities. So, a very routine, simple calculation of evaluating pressure drop cannot be done the way it was done in single phase flow. Okay. Now, I will bring additional complexity. Yes, sir, complexity, complexity you are saying, why then why are we even studying? There are ways to study it. We will make life very simple by making several simplifications in how we proceed. Now, tell me one other thing, very simple equation. Correct? So, this can be written as m dot g divided by rho g a g equal to u g, m dot f divided by rho f a f is equal to u f. Kindly take a look at this and tell me what is so difficult about this. Mass flow is typically known. For calculating the velocity, I need to know the area. Of course, properties are typically known. So, let us say this is known, this is known. How do I know this? How do I know this? Isn't this, we saw here, na? it is related to the way the flow is going to take place. So, here if you take this location, the area occupied by air is much smaller compared to what it is at this location. It is continuously evolving. As quality changes, area occupied by liquid reduces, area occupied by glass, gas phase changes, which means my velocities are unknown. Why is it not known? Because I do not know AG and AF at all. I cannot keep on imposing my constraint that this should occupy half the half the pipe. It is not possible. The flow will just take the path of least resistance and go in a manner it is going to, uh, it will, it will, uh, it will flow. So, this is not known. So, even a very simple thing like this, I am at loss. Okay. So, sir, 
you are telling me everything is difficult, everything is different and why are we even studying this? Well, what we do is we make a very simple approximation. We say m dot f, let us say it is occupying the full pipe and what is the pseudo velocity that is used? m dot g is rho g total area j g. J f j g are called as superficial velocities and we use this velocity because total area of geometry is known, rho f is known, rho g is known, m dot f, m dot g is known. So, this is a number which can be calculated. And because this can be calculated, this is used in analysis many a time. Oh my God. So, you do, you said that, we said that we do not, we cannot calculate densities. We have to calculate variable densities, variable viscosities, variable average velocities. That also we cannot calculate. We have to calculate a superficial velocity. So, the point being a very, very simple pipe flow problem even where quality is changing along the direction of flow becomes so complicated. Okay. So, we got the issue of pipe orientation gives rise to how the phases flow with respect to each other. Okay, very good. Then this gives to difference in wall shear which means this gives rise to difference in pumping power. This also gives rise, now let us take heat transfer, H is equal to minus K dt by dy at the wall, correct? So, if I have liquid in contact with the wall versus vapor in contact with the wall, if this is liquid, thermal conductivity of liquid is greater than thermal conductivity of gas, Kf greater than Kg, right. So, the heat transfer coefficient that you would have when water is touching the walls of the pipe versus when air is touching the walls of the pipe is going to be very different, two, three orders different. So, not only does the orientation of the pipe alter the flow pattern, so, this is called as flow regimes or flow pattern. This flow pattern affects how pressure drop is calculated, flow pattern affects how heat transfer is calculated. So, the cause is the same for us both. This is the cause, this is the effect. And we as engineers ultimately want both these quantities, both Nusselt number or heat transfer coefficient and pumping power or pressure drop are my two important quantities in engineering. Both of them are going to get affected by how the phases are going to behave with respect to each other. I can tell everything theoretically, the water air will touch the wall, or water will touch the wall, etc. But the fact that the velocities are vastly different, fact that I do not know the respective areas of the two phases, I do not know the thicknesses of the regions which are occupied by liquid and vapor. So, calculating engineering quantities becomes very, very, very difficult. Okay. So, keeping all this in mind, what we have done is we have, we have put this course into two parts. First part is we will study the first half of the course, we will study the hydrodynamics just as we did in our undergraduate fluid mechanics, we will study the fluid mechanics associated with two phase flow and then we will go to the heat transfer. So, this is the first part of the course, this is the second half of the course. I have, I have split this into two parts. First, before mid sem is only fluid mechanics, after mid sem is how phase change occurs, how boiling occurs, 
what are the criteria for boiling, what are, that, uh, what are the conditions that need to be satisfied for boiling to occur, okay, what are the boiling regimes that are going to be there, what is a boiling curve, what is critical heat flux, all these definitions and concepts and various things associated with heat transfer we will study in the second half. In the first half of the course, we will study primarily we are going to deal with hydrodynamics or the fluid mechanics associated with the two phase flow problem. That means, we will look at effect of orientation, concept of flow pattern or flow regime maps, then most important thing pressure drop calculation. And in this, we are going to spend a lot of time on what is called as a homogeneous equilibrium model. What is it? It is a model which says ug equal to uf, that is all. Velocities are equal, so I do not need to worry about any of this business. I do not need to worry about this business. I will say both of them are occupying the same area, therefore, the velocities are equal. So, my single phase calculations, all our single phase calculations, same form can be used in case of calculating two phase pressure drops. You might say, sir, so many complications you have told, half an hour we have used. And what is the point in making ug equal to uf? You will be surprised that when you are, when you are drinking your soda, is it that the gas is coming out first and then all liquid is waiting at the bottom? No, both liquid and gas is coming out at the same time, right? So, their UG equal to UF is very much valid. Like that, many situations exist where the two velocities can be approximately made equal and this homogeneous equilibrium model just takes care of the two-phase problem by using mixture properties. that is density viscosity in single phase equations. Awesome, right? In single phase equation, I am putting instead of rho, I will write it as a rho mixture. Instead of mu, I will write it as mu bar or mu mixture. So, using this, I would be able to do everything that I did for single phase flow with a different set of properties. This is the first model. Of course, life is not so simple. So, the next one will be separated flow model. Separated flow model talks about how we are going to deal with the case where ug not equal to uf. And this is very important because of this quantity I showed you here, u gas by u liquid. This ratio is called as slip ratio greater than 1 and we do not know what it is. Okay, so, this is unknown. So, this is a complicated exercise. Then, we will also do one or two very important concepts. That concept is basically called as a choked or critical flow. We will, I will go into this later. Okay, what is critical flow? In your uh, flow through nozzles and diffusers, you would have studied choking mass flow becomes constant when the pressure ratio is 0 0.528, correct? For a flow through a nozzle, this you would have seen. That effect of the downstream condition does not get propagated and you will get a constant mass flow rate. So, when you have a two phase flow situation, you will come up with some kind of choking or critical flow, which we will study the criteria because it is a very, very serious problem in, in two phase flow situations when you have sudden generation of vapor, then your whole process is governed by what is happening to the vapor, etc. Third, an, another important nice uh, thing is will give expose you to the concept of flow reversal. So, you can, I can do this thought experiment with you right away. So, you have a pipe in which liquid is trying to come down, okay. So, you have a pipe through which you are, you are just pouring liquid through the walls, thin layer of liquid is trying to come down. Then you say I want to also put air upward. So, liquid down, gas upflow we are starting. 
okay and what am i doing in this experiment velocity of gas phase is going on increasing progressively ug is increasing uf is constant and acting downward so if i keep on pushing higher and higher mass flow of gas you would observe that this falling film suddenly starts will will stop falling and if it was entering from here it will try to go up go further out or come out it will be prevented from coming down and let us say this pipe was long and you inserted it through a hole this flow will go upward further increase in gas velocity you will see that this film will go like this further increase no downward flow will happen entire flow would be like this liquid also up gas also up so this is counter current now this becomes co current liquid gas both going upward this is called flow reversal okay after doing this i think this is typically where we would go to have the mid semester exam then we would go to heat transfer part then we will study in great detail very great detail thermodynamics of bubble generation then we will study criteria criteria for bubble nucleation that is generation followed by growth of the bubble and then how the bubble leaves the surface and this whole thing repeating itself okay this is important because otherwise it's only going to become completely empirical then we will go to flow boiling this is all for pool boiling pool boiling is what we do when we make tea at home okay pool boiling is basically where you have a fixed mass of liquid and then you are heating you have seen one bubble coming going up collapsing another bubble going up here collapsing then suddenly over time lot of bubbles will get generated so this is pool boiling but most engineering applications would be involving flow so flow boiling flow through a pipe why do we study pool boiling because fundamentals that i told you thermodynamics and criteria for bubble nucleation etc can be studied through this apply this concept directly to flow with a small additional variable because of the velocity which is higher will contribute to increase in h so h pool heat transfer coefficient flow would be slightly lower and this would be slightly higher because of the effect of the presence of velocity okay then we go to what is called as a boiling curve very important boiling curve is a graph of wall heat flux versus wall superheat t wall minus t saturation and this would be this is the boiling curve we'll study how this boiling curve is generated what are the regimes this is nucleate boiling this is natural convection this is transition boiling this is film boiling this is minimum film boiling temperature this point is called critical heat flux so we will study these in great great detail and after all this of uh, study most of the two phase flow problems uh, how we how we how we get the nusselt number is empirical so entire course can be taught using these correlations but there is no fun okay so that is why these aspects this thermodynamics criteria these are all analytical and you know conceptual stuff so we need to understand this these are all theoretical theoretical important stuff that you need to know and in this boiling curve this film boiling transition boiling chf all these things we will spend time bulk as engineers we are mainly interested in nucleate boiling this is what is good heat transfer 
and the heat transfer here h in two phase flow is approximately of the order of 10 to the 4 or 10 to the 5. Single phase water order of 100 even 500 probably. So, this part is what makes two phase flow so powerful as compared to single phase liquid. Okay. So, our region of interest would be primarily this part of the boiling curve, the good part and you can just take a look here, Q double prime is equal to H delta T, Newton's law of cooling. So, Q double prime by delta T is what? Heat transfer coefficient. The slope of this graph is nothing but your heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So, we will cover boiling curve and then cover the reasons uh, for enhancement of heat transfer in flow boiling. We will study how nucleation becomes less etc. We will find out ways and means to calculate heat transfer coefficient keeping in mind H2 phase in flow boiling is H nucleate boiling component plus H convective component. This part nucleate boiling we will say there is a suppression with increased quality, there is an enhancement with increased quality heat. So, this enhancement is because your velocity increases, Reynolds number increases, Nusselt number has to increase. This we know from single phase. So, velocity increases because more vapor generated. So, this gets enhanced, this gets suppressed because the process becomes so fast, this criteria for nucleation requires time. These things require time, the bubble has to be formed, it has to grow, it has to depart. The whole process takes some time. That time the fluid does not have here, therefore nucleation gets suppressed. So, in, you would see this, the nucleate boiling component, nucleate boiling component decreases like this and this is your force convection component force convection component increases with increase in thermodynamic quality like this. So, we will study reasons for these and then H2 phase is basically some, some, some product of this or various forms. Now, our course per se is divided into two broad halves and therefore, the weightages are also roughly similar. So, we are going to talk about, we are going to talk about this. Uh, if I go to the slide here, the, the word document, I hope all of you can see this document here. This gives you the name of the course. This is me, this is where I sit in THTF lab that is behind the, uh, behind the workshop. Mashruwala lab is there, just opposite that there is a tall blue building. There is a lift with a glass uh, door, uh, glass uh, exterior, you can see it is hard to miss. And we are going to be meeting in this particular classroom at this time. My contact details are there, you can go to the web and uh, search other details about me if you want. Uh, we have a teaching assistant whose name is going to be announced a little later, I do not have the list right now. And this is our tentative course outline, tentative course outline is here. I have about 27 lectures. So, we have about 13 to 14 lectures in each half of the course and this whatever I have told, I have shown here roughly indicating the time duration for each topic. Well, historically I have not been able to cover post critical heat flux that is the last part, I have not been able to cover this and here I have not been able to cover most of the time I have not been able to cover flooding and flow reversal. But we will have one mid -sem during the mid -sem week and a final exam which will be comprehensive. Very important thing that I want to tell you in this course is I cannot leave fluid mechanics and, cal and do the heat transfer part. So, though the first part of the semester is hydrodynamics, you cannot say sir I will forget that and I will treat the second part as a new course. You will start with pressure drop calculations even in the heat transfer part. Okay, you will start with energy balance. Energy balance itself involves heat transfer because energy balance involves pressure drop calculations involve quality which is coming from energy balance. So, hydrodynamics does not 
is not decoupled from heat transfer. So, you are not you are not going into the mechanisms of heat transfer that is what we are not going to study. But the fact that the quality quality is dependent on H minus HF by HFG this we need quality and this is coming from energy balance we are going to need this uh, heat transfer part here basic stuff. Okay. So, though the course seems to be split into two parts the second part relies heavily on the first part for doing the energy balance and pressure drop calculations. What is the, how are you going to be graded? This is something which all of you are uh, eager to know and you are, uh, this is what you care for is we have about 7 to 8 homeworks. Some of the problems, let me warn you, there is no textbook per se, okay, that is the first thing. So, there is no textbook and uh, you will see that pressure drop calculation problems can take about 8, 10 pages, 15 pages depending on the correlations and models that are used. So, I can have a homework with two problems which is going to take you about 5 to 6 hours to do. Okay. So, typically we will have 7 or 8 homeworks, 4 in each part. Some problems would be very straightforward, simple 1 to 2 pages, but typical the heat transfer coefficient or the pressure drop calculation, those would be long ones. Okay. 15 percent weightages, 2 quizzes in the first half of the course, 2 in the second half. So, 3, 3 and 2 weeks like that, 2 and a half weeks later each quiz we will have. 4 quizzes each 5 percent weight. These would be closed book, closed notes, typically conceptual questions. So, those of you who have had courses with me, you know what type of quizzes I said. So, there are no numerical answers, there is no use of calculator, true or false with reasons, sketches, give reasons why plot this with respect to this, all these kinds of questions where multiple choice with reasons etc. You will, you will see. Four quizzes, no best, nothing, all four will be counted. These would be outside of class, close book, close notes. Mid sem 25 percent weightage during the mid sem week, final exam 40 percent weightage during the end sem. Now, attendance policy, again something which you guys are going to be concerned and you guys have to worry about is that I told you there is no textbook. Okay. There are reference books where we will take topics, sections from various chapters and develop the course. So, if you do not come to class, you will not know what is being covered, where it is taken from and you will not have the time nor the space to read huge textbooks and make sense out of it. So, it is almost compulsory that you come to class. I will take attendance every class. And I will not pass on a DX grade to somebody, but if somebody says, please show me your attendance sheet, I will give them and administration is free to give whatever grade they want for low attendance. What are the references? The course consists of uh, several classical textbooks, which are really good ones, but many of them are very expensive and again, as I told you, we are taking only few chapters, few concepts from various chapters. So, this book by Wallace is on the only on the hydrodynamics part. It is not even available on print right now. So, it is gone, but the copies, there are copies of this book available in our library. Uh, Van P. Carey is a very good book. It is very fundamental, uh, not, not empirical, not correlation based. So, it is lot of fundamentals are there written. Uh, by Professor Van P. Carey. Convective boiling and condensation by Collier and Thom. Now, number 2 and 3 are what we will use heavily. Uh, this number 3 is a little bit more difficult from fundamentals, it does not have that much. Uh, a lot of correlations are there, a lot of concepts are there. So, these two we will be using extensively. So, some parts which are good I will take from Carey. For example, thermodynamics of nucleation, etc. I will take from uh, Collier as well as Carey. Some correlations part typically from Collier I will take. Then uh, other books by Wally that is a small you know thin hand uh, you know 50, 60 page you know uh, quick reading kind of book. Tong and Tang no numerical problems only theory only collection of information boiling heat transfer and two phase flow that that is more from a applied person point of view reactor safety people will be using it. Uh, last but not the least, a very, very classical textbook nuclear systems 1 
by Neil Todrias and Kazimi, faculty from MIT. These, oh, this book, there are two volumes of this textbook, written primarily from nuclear engineering point of view. But as I said, two-phase flow has great applications in nuclear engineering. So, lot of, almost everything that we do is there in this textbook. It is a huge textbook, about 700-800 pages. And leave out the neutronics and nuclear reactor part, we will be having few chapters from this book which we can take material for. Okay, books are very expensive. All these books are very expensive. So, you cannot afford to buy them. Maybe you can download certain copies or make photocopies from the library, whatever you want. So, the, all the more reason why you need to attend classes. So, cutting the long story short, you need to attend classes. Then, certain rules and regulations which I insist all in all my classes and I adhere to very strictly is you have to turn off your cell phones. Okay. There is no place for having cell phone here. If you are in class, you are attending class. You are not doing anything else. Okay. Again, I need not tell you that you should not be using any unfair means. If it is being done, you will be brought to the notice of the concerned authorities and they will deal with it the way they think it is appropriate. So, please do attend all classes. Homework will be collected and graded. Please do not copy. You are allowed to interact with everybody, with your friends, with me with the TA and do the problems on your own. Why this is so important, I will tell you. In your exams, you will see one or two problems only. As I told you, the problems take very long, very lengthy. So, you will do probably five or six problems in your semester and you will see a problem in the exam which is going to encompass all what you have studied. Okay. So, if you do not know how to do a homework problem, chances are that you will not know how to do your NSEM problem or your MIDSEM problem because directly they would be based on what you have done. Okay. So, there are only so many types of problems that we can give first. Let me make it very clear that it is the inherent difficulty of the course that makes us generate problems is going to get very difficult. So, the only certain kinds of problems that we can give to be solved in an examination environment, 2 hours, 3 hours. Okay, So, if you have not done the homework, it is highly unlikely that you would be able to attempt the examination problems. And these problems will account for 50, 60 percent of your grade okay, of that exam paper. And if you do not do it, you know the consequences. So, please do the work on your own. You can seek help from your friends. You can work in groups. You can seek my help. Time is there for every homework, about 10 days we give and definitely if the, the homework is too long and you need a little more time, I will give you a day or two if you want. Okay, So, my idea is not to penalize you for a day's late homework or something. Yes, deadlines are important, but knowledge is far more important than a deadline. So, if you were assuring me that, sir, I need that extra day because I had three quizzes this week, I could not do it last week, whatever. I promise I will do it on my own. I will give it to you tomorrow perfectly fine. Okay. Another thing I want to emphasize here, look at the complexity of the course. Even in your UG heat transfer, you use a correlation, Littes Bolter, you will get one Nusselt number. You use another Petikov correlation, you will get a different Nusselt number. They will be off by 10, 15 percent. Neither of them are wrong. Okay. So, as, a, as an instructor who is teaching this course, my focus is on fundamentals and concepts and how you are understood and you are applying the material to come to the answer. Wrong calculation here and there. If the procedure is right, I will give you 70 percent of your marks. Okay. Depends on where the error has happened mathematically. If it has happened in a case, for example, you did something wrong and the flow came out as laminar instead of turbulent, then the entire way you handle the problem is wrong. Right. So, in that case, the penalty will be 60 percent I would give you. But if your everything is right and there is only a mathematical mistake which does not alter the nature of the solution, the numbers are different. Depending on where you have made the mistake, 70, 75, 80 percent marks are usually given. One mistake error is not going to be penalized more than once. So, you made a mistake in quality, everything else is right after that, you will lose marks for that. Pressure drop will be wrong. I know it is a lot of work for me to calculate those things, but 
I will do it because I want to give you credit for the fact that you have attempted it and your procedure is fully correct. The procedure has to be right downstream. You cannot mess up with the procedure and say, sir, give me 80%, 70%. No. Mistake should be only in a number and everything after that should be correct. So, do not worry about the grading, marking, etc. Historically, so far about almost every year, everybody has passed except one time where six students failed because they did not submit the homeworks. So, that was a big difference in the scores. Not coming to class, not submitting homeworks completely, they played a fool and therefore, the grades have, they suffered and they had to fail the course because they were way below the rest of the class. Okay? So, let, let such unpleasant things not happen with you in our course. We are not going to be, uh, we do not have to deal with this kind of thing. It is not pleasant at all for you as well as for me. Then last but not the least, what I want you to do? This I introduce in every course, every course of mine I follow this and I want you to follow this in this course and every, every problem that you handle in your real life also. We are not going to just be focused about uh, getting a right answer. No, that is absolutely not the only thing that we are focused on. We are engineers. Okay? So, we want to understand what certain things mean, make sense out of the results. Okay? I had a student when I taught heat transfer when I was a grad student. I had a student who, it was a heat generation in a cylindrical rod problem okay? and uh, some numbers were given and the student gave me the center temperature of the rod as 6 lakh Kelvin, 6 lakh, not 6000, 6 lakh and did not even batter an eyelid to say, sir, there is an error. I do not have the time to find the error, but I know it is wrong. So, this is the point I am trying to make is that you need to understand what you are getting and you need to know whether it is realistic, it is right, it is approximately right. 6 lakh Kelvin is not possible, even the sun's temperature is two orders lower than that. Okay? So, you, when, when you get some illogical numbers, you should be able to go back and check. You should, even if you do not have the time, you say, I am sure this is wrong. I have used this number downstream to calculate. But I know this is wrong, I am unable to spot the error perfectly fine. You have succeeded as an engineer. Okay? Given the time, given the non-examination environment, you probably will figure it out in about 2 hours time, okay? where you made a mistake. So, the idea being here, I want, I want us to grow as engineers, not as simple, you know, calculate. You guys are used to number crunching, that is something which has to go. So, what I want you to do in your homeworks, etc. is follow this. This is taken verbatim from Incropera's textbook. Begin each problem on a new page. Yes. Okay. Be legible in your writing. Now, if I write this in a shabby manner, you will not like it. Right. So, be legible. Begin each problem on a new page. It might sound very schoolish, but does not matter. I do not care what you think about me and this, but you have to follow this. So, state the problem. Do not repeat the problem statement. Use appropriate symbols. So, water flows through a pipe of diameter 25 mm of length 1 meter with an inlet temperature of 35 degrees. So, what you do? D is equal to 25 mm. That is 0 0.025 meter, L 1 meter, uh, T bulk mean inlet, T i 35 degrees. So, you put this in symbolic form. Briefly state what is to be calculated. Evaluate Nusselt number or exit temperature. So, put that in symbol form. Draw a schematic of the physical system wherever possible. Very important. It gives you an idea of the problem. And this is something which I say very frequently, even to my son, I say, your figure should aid your solution, not confuse you. Okay? Triangle ABC at angle A40, B, B70 and C is whatever, uh, whatever B, B60. You cannot draw an equilateral triangle. So, if you draw an equilateral triangle, then you are immediately going to say, ah, this is 60, 60, 60. Or you would be forced to, or you, you would mark certain things which are not correct. So, whenever you draw, draw a regular long scalene triangle, which does not which doesn't, uh, look like an equilateral triangle. Okay? The pro point I am trying to make is a diagram should aid your solution. Okay? Put arrows, put mass coming in, heat going out, heat coming in, etc. appropriately. Choose the control volume. 
most important, most importantly, what all of you mess up is assumptions. No solution is wrong if it is supported by appropriate assumptions. I have five minutes to solve a pressure drop calculation problem in two-phase flow. I cannot do it. I can do it with lot of assumptions. Constant friction factor. Instead of calculating friction factor based on Reynolds number every time, I will say let me take 0 0.02 as a friction factor. I will be able to solve it in five minutes. So, assumptions are the key, steady state, where you have taken properties from, uh, what kind of flow it is, okay, what are the other constant, horizontal flow, vertical flow, uniform heat flux, variable heat flux, varying mass flow rate, whatever, put it. Simplify your equations based on the assumptions that are there, okay. So, if you have a th three dimensional Navier Stokes equation, Simplify it by giving the assumption steady state, two dimensional, whatever, whatever. So, compile the property values. Okay, you look from which table you have taken, make a note. At what temperature you have taken, make a note. Why? If your problem is wrong, I can go and check. Oh, this is where he made the mistake. You yourself can check later on. If you are giving this to your boss, you know where you got it from. You can go back and revisit. Okay, so give reference to that. Solve all problems using variables. Do not start putting numbers from the first step, please. Keep it in variable form. In real life, you will not do one calculation. You will be doing a whole lot of calculations. So, the variables will go into a computer program or a spreadsheet. So, put it in variable form. Then put numbers when, when you are ready to put all the equations together. Okay. Give the answer to two significance digits, sometimes three, depending on what you want, quality three digits. Others can be two digits. Give appropriate SI units for all question, all possible, I mean all quantities, both intermediate and final. Why? Because heavily reactor industry data is in British units. So, there is a very high chance that your correlations have been made for British units. This is where a lot of us have problems. We are not used to British units. Of course, new books have the correlations with the conversion factors appropriately taken and SI units being used. But if you get a paper, very, very likely that you would get pressure in PSI, you would get temperature in Fahrenheit, diameter in inches, you have to convert. So, throughout the course, we will follow SI units and every step we will put the appropriate units. Wherever you see some, some information or data from another unit, system of units, convert it to SI units and then use them. Very important, I have lost a lot of marks in calculating pressure drop in two phase flow when I was a student because this G subscript C 32.1 or something that would always, I would always mess up there. Okay. Last thing, comment on your result, discuss about two lines, two sentences on what it is meaning to you. What does it mean? Is, is the flow regime that you thought annular flow, if annular flow is characterized by liquid at the wall, vapor in the center, so on. So, put something where I know that you have understood what this number means. You know what, I know what you understand by looking at this number. I need to know that. So, make a small discussion if possible. Okay. And we are engineers, so we want this kind of an approach when we go to the industry, when we go for a job. Okay. So, please follow this procedure, my exam solutions will follow this solution with pattern and you will see that, that being systematic takes a little effort in the beginning. But after that, you cannot go back to your haphazard way of doing things. So, you would love to be systematic, you would love to continue to doing things the right way, the nice way. Okay. So, with this, I will end today's class. We will meet in the next lecture where we will probably, we will start with formal definitions that we are going to use in two phase flow. We will look at definition of what is called as void fraction, which is the volume of vapor divided by the total volume of liquid plus vapor, a very, very important variable in two phase flow. Thermodynamic quality alone is not, in, in, uh, not important. This void fraction, space occupied, changes the whole, uh, uh, you know, arena where we are working with and how this vapor uh, phase adjusts itself in different orientation. Void fraction may be the same, but in vertical we saw how the bubbles are going to be, in horizontal we saw how the bubbles are going to be. In upward flow versus downward flow you will see the difference. So, we will see definitions, 
there are three qualities thermodynamic equilibrium quality flow quality unlike our basic ug thermo we had only one quality everything we took as the same m dot g by m dot h minus hf by hfg was also quality m by mg by m also was quality now that's not the case flow quality is m dot g by m dot total equilibrium quality is based on energy balance h minus hf by hfg and static quality stationary fluid amount of mass of gas by total mass okay so those definitions of course today we have seen the idea of uh, uh, phase velocity as well as what we called as a superficial velocity so that definition anyway we have seen today superficial velocity so these definitions we will uh, give then we will go to how to calculate the two phase friction factor and then how to calculate the total pressure drop over the next 7 or 8 classes these these things would be covered thank you very much